Hello viewers, welcome to another episode of It's a Learning Curve. In these unprecedented times, when we know that COVID-19 has affected every sector of the life, we know that it has hard hit the economy of the world. And it is very obvious that it has also affected the job market really bad. It is obvious for all the PhD scientists or any other job seekers to feel clueless and directionless as to how the future is going to look like when the job market is so thin. So today we have a special guest, Dr. Pradeep Pasfule, who can have give you some direction as to what can be done after PhD, uh, not just look for a job, but also have some fellowships which can be your which can be your saviors through this hard time. Pradeep Pasfule, I'm glad to say that he himself has earned some prestigious fellowships throughout his postdoctoral fellowship. I would like to go ahead and request Dr. Pasfule to tell something about himself. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tutti. It is nice to talk about fellowship and thanks for the invitation. Uh, myself, Pradeep Paspule. Uh, I had been uh, graduated from NCL Pune in 2014 and after that uh, I was working as a, a postdoctorate fellow in uh, AIST Osaka wherein I also got the JSPS fellowship for, for another couple of years as a postdoctoral fellow and uh, soon after finishing the JSPS I also got the Humboldt fellowship to work in uh, Germany wherein I joined as a Alexander von Humboldt postdoctorate fellow in Technical University Berlin. And currently, uh, after finishing my Humboldt as well, I'm still working in the same group as a um, postdoctoral fellow. And I'm working mostly in uh, crystalline and porous material for uh, various applications. That's excellent. I'm sure you might have gone through a very uh, uh, strong journey in your career to bag these fellowships in your life and definitely these fellowships when you have to your profile really make your profile look outstanding so congratulations on that dr Pazfuli. now that you have such a great experience in earning these fellowships can you just put some light on what kind of fellowships are available out there and what are general steps involved while you are preparing to apply for these fellowships? Okay, so I will split this question in two uh, steps. First is like what kind of fellowships are available? If we talk about particularly uh, fellowships for Indians and in that perspective, there are two, two kinds in there as well. One is international fellowships and another is the Indian fellowship. So in international, if I have to name few, being a, uh, being, a, being a one of the recipient, I would always put forward Humboldt, which is uh, very nice and it gives you a, um, a really, really good focus to your career as well. Then there is a JSPS from Japan, uh, Newton to work in UK, Mary Curie to work in Europe and uh, most probably UK this year too. Uh, and DAD, which generally provides a lot of fellowships as well. Then um, for countries like Singapore, you have some fellowships like Presidential Fellowship, which gives you a um, good platform to work in there. And uh, Thousand Star, for example, for countries in China and Asia. But most importantly, there are some fellowships which are meant for women scientists. Uh, uh, in that way, I would put uh, one example. My institution, uh, Technical University Berlin, have the fellowship called IPOD, which is exclusively for the women. And if we come to the Indian level, we have some fellowships like Women Scientists, which are exclusively for women as well. So there are a couple of opportunities uh, for exclusively for women. And if we generally see in India what kind of fellowships are available for the postdocs, so to summarize, we have JRF SRF, which is for PhD. Definitely, all of us know much more about it. But there is a Nehru Fellowship for postdoctoral uh, fellows. Then there is a DST Inspire. We have NPDF. We have Ramanujan and Ramalinga Swami, which are much more um, towards the faculty application. So uh, answering first question, these were these are some examples of the fellowships. And then coming back to the what are the steps involved in the 
applying the fellowships. So first and most important is uh, finding a right fellowship. For example, somebody wants to work in Japan, they should go for the JSPS. Somebody wants to work in Germany, there is a uh, Humboldt Fellowship. Or somebody want to work in some European countries, you have um, something called uh, Marie Curie. So, but another is all about eligibility as well. Where in, for example, in Humboldt, you can apply for Humboldt for four years from your degree. So we have to keep some factors in the mind that what is the eligibility of that fellowship. First check the eligibility. And most importantly, some of the fellowship, uh, I will again come back to Humboldt, where you can submit application whole year. There is no limitation. But JSPS, you need to submit application twice in a year. So these are some limitations, but we need to find out a way out of this one and apply within that eligibility. Second and most important is finding a host. So which is really, really important because uh, as much as your own profile, host profile is also biggest factor of uh, getting the fellowship. Then third and most important factor is topic on which you would like to submit the proposal. And here I would put really, really important focus because this is your proposal on which they are supposed to pay you. So in that way, I would say that topic and your proposal is also an important factor in your fellowship as much as your professor's profile, as much as your profile and your publications. And uh, fourth is put 100% in your proposal. Make a nice presentation so that, you know, as soon as somebody looks into the, your proposal, they would be able to see that, okay, yeah, this looks really interesting factor for myself. <clears throat> and last factor is a, uh, just confirm that you are submitting the application to the right person, right link, right time. And most importantly, when you have to submit some of the recommendation letters, make sure that these recommendation letters are quality recommendations and they are recommending you. They, they should not demonize your application. They should always lift your application. So just be careful who is recommending your application to. So that is another factor. So I would summarize in this way. Uh, so steps involves finding a right host, writing a good proposal, and submitting the application to the right fellowship. All right. Uh, you have very well vividly cleared the stages involved in the application. And as you mentioned that it is very important to have a host while you are doing the application. So you know under whom you are trying to work during the fellowship. So what would be the path to find the right host so as to go ahead with the application? Yeah, uh, thank you, Dr. Tupte. This is a really, really important question if you want to apply for the fellowship. As I mentioned earlier, as much as your profile matters, host profile also a biggest factor of getting the fellowship. So uh, most of us came through a path where you have to have you get a JRF and then you don't need to find a host. You can just go and up, approach someone and then you get it, that particular lab. But right. for finding the, finding the host for these international fellowships, it is really important to find someone which is eligible and who can host you for two years and more than that. So what I did and what I would like to suggest to everyone is that go to that particular fellowships website, find out the people in your area who has got the fellowship last year. Mm. go back there check that with whom they are working most of the time in my experience it it seems that like some labs are very known for getting the fellowships and some labs even you submit the applications because of whatever reasons some labs don't get the fellowships for this particular any international fellowship you would say so check the profile of your, your host wherein you can go to his publication. Of course, another factor which is really important. Of course, if you get the fellowship and you don't get the publication, there is not at all use of getting the fellowship because publication is the, which is, publication is the only currency which runs in this market. So be careful while selecting the host. That particular person has to have the good publication. Check how many fellowships, fellowship holders does that person have. Just to being precise, uh, being, being precise I would say that if you are applying someone if you are looking for a host in Germany for Humboldt Fellowship, go to that professor's website, check it. How many Humboldt Fellows does that professor currently have? How many Humboldt, professor, uh, Humboldt Fellowships does that, uh, that host previously had? And if you see that, okay, there were 
sufficient number of the Humboldt fellows, then you can definitely submit application with that one. But it should not be thumb rule because in many cases, somebody has somebody like young professor who did, is just starting the group, which could be exceptional. The, another important factor when you are submitting the uh, application uh, with any professor would be also check that where exactly his students are going. Mm. Like what exactly alumni of that particular lab are doing. In few cases, you would clearly see that some of the professor and their students are actually joining into pharma. Some of the professors are really, really helping their students to push forward in the academy. So you should look into their interest as well and you should go into that particular aspect as well. So in a, in a way, I would say that while choosing the host, don't consider that, key, okay, I'm, I don't have to pay anything. He is agreeing and I will just submit the application. But just keep one thing in the mind if you submit an application and your application gets rejected, you are losing one golden opportunity. So don't take easy that you know you are selecting someone and just because he's agreeing means I should submit the application. Select a proper guide, which is really important because that is the person who is going to host you for two years. And once you make a relation, that will be a lifetime. So be, be creative and be, uh, you know, uh, be uh, careful while selecting the host as well. That's fantastic. And these were very awesome insider tips. Every fellowship applier has to keep these things in mind when he is trying to find a host. Uh, going ahead with this subject, when you said after you have a host, you have to go through writing a proposal. So how do you approach this step? This is as important as finding the host, I guess, because uh, the proposal is someone, uh, something on which you are, uh, that particular agency is going, going to provide the money. Why should they provide the money which is not worth off? So first thing we, we, should, we should ask ourselves. So in that way, I would say that uh, when you are approaching the topic, when you are selecting the topic, always select the topic of interdisciplinary between you and your host. For example, when you are particularly talking about yourself and you are choosing the topic, which is your own PhD topic or extension of your own PhD topic, always this, this uh, fellowship agencies always see that what exactly new things you are supposed to do. So don't propose a topic which exactly you are doing in the PhD because you are not learning anything new. Similarly, I would even go in the other way. Don't select the topic which is from your host as well because you are not adding anything to his lab and why this funding agency should provide you the money, which you are not adding anything in, in the research. So important is to finding a topic between both of you, wherein you can have the interdiscipline between, interdisciplinary area between you and your host. So just if I have to be precise, I will tell my own example, wherein when I approached to my Humboldt professor applying for the um, postdoctoral fellowship, he was working on some area called porous polymers. And then I was the expert in the mock. So what we thought, can we assemble these two areas together? And that's what we did. We have wrote proposal on crystalline polymers, crystalline polymers, which is another area of the research. So we found out the Medi Mediterranean area where we can propose and we can submit the applications together. And it was successful application at the end. So my first opinion about the you know, finding the topic is don't go to the area of your extension of your PhD. Second, uh, talk, talk with professor and talk very, very deeply. Discuss, discuss, discuss. Don't go one way. Sometimes what happens, you are just proposing something and professor say that, okay, although I don't feel that it's a good topic, but let's go ahead. Don't do that. Because that is the topic where professor has to also recommend you for the fellowship. And professor's recommendation is always important when you are supposed to get the fellowship. And just keep in one thing in the mind, for every international fellowship, professor also submit a recommendation on your behalf. So don't let that down. Write down a proposal. And for writing proposal, when you are topic, you are supposed to decide the topic, discuss with your professor. So sorry to interrupt. When you talk about uh, discussing with the professor, this is the host professor. Host yes. professor. I mean host professor. Okay. Host professor, you have to discuss very, very deeply, like, you know, send a couple of emails, check with him, even possible. I always recommend that talk with him once. You can have some Skype meetings, you can have some whatever way, 
but talk with him in person discuss with him what topics what kind of characterization can do for example couple of time like you know couple of years ago in my lab one guy proposed something that was not possible to do in our lab and his application was only rejected because of that particular reason because the reviewer said that everything looks fine but you cannot do it this in your, your your lab so topic select something which is interdisciplinary second don't select something which is really old for example synthesis of carbon of course it is a really good area of research but now somehow carbon is not been a area of that focus of course you can propose something new method for synthesis in the carbon but also look into the, can you apply carbon for some energy application so that will be the focus of the research so you should try to find out which area which particular discipline is important for today's world otherwise people won't find you mm. so this is really important while finding the uh, finding the topic so i would again come back and say that propose something interdisciplinary perfect so to reiterate uh, fellowships are time specific look at your eligibility try to find the right host have a good communication with the host and try to figure out what intersecting topic you can have which will get you money get yourself funded and lastly have a really presentable proposal exactly perfect and with this before we leave what would be your golden take home message to our viewers i i will just mention couple of things one be choosy like while selecting the host don't be don't ne never say that okay somebody saying me to apply that's why i'm applying don't don't never do that check how many uh, what kind of publication that person have what kind of host he could be because that guy is going to be your lifetime uh, connect connectivity because once you apply you get the fellowship then you will be connected with that person's name forever so be choosy and what i believe till now is as much as professor chooses you you should be choosing the professor as well and that much liberty we have so my golden message out of this whole topic would be be choosy find the right host write down nice proposal select a nice topic and apply for it everything is possible thank you very much you have given us some excellent tips which every phd student can work on and have it in their mind when they are planning to apply for any sorts of fellowship also trying uh, also thank you for giving us the list of fellowships also exclusively some gender specific women fellowships which are out there and people should go ahead and take advantages of all these fellowships and with this i would like to thank you all for all your support stay tuned stay watching for all such exciting videos and till then always remember it's a learning curve thank you thank you dr dutti